Ooh, cool. I guess that means we're live. Um, hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about um, animation workflow tips today. And yeah, so hopefully you'll pick up a thing or two. So let's get this going. The main thing I'm going to cover is, I mean, ultimately, right, Spring's here. It's time to change our animating lives for the better and spark some joy with a little workflow cleanup. Who doesn't like Spring cleaning? Um, the goal of this is to maintain uh, a flow state while animating by just reducing friction, distractions, and just generally trying to speed up the process. So what I want you to kind of take away from this and the, the habit I want you to develop is just learning to scratch your own itch. Like look for the pain points in your workflow that are likely pointing out inefficiencies that need to be resolved. Like I know some of you are already way, way ahead on this, and that's awesome. But for some of you that are just starting out and really haven't found a place to start from, hopefully this can provide you with a couple of things to take into account before moving forward. So before we get into this, here's a, a nice inspirational quote. So the process of facing our workflow can be quite painful. It forces us to confront our imperfections and inadequacies. Speaking is obviously one of mine, <laughs> and the foolish choices we made in the past, Marie Kondo. So some wise words. Next. All right, cool. So where do we start? Obviously, we're going to start with the basics. What I'm going to do is we'll just have a look at some of the basic functions in Maya and see how we can improve those things. OK, so we have our default Maya. And as you can see, nothing special. Um, generally, some of the things we're going to do when in this default mode, we're going to be able to select things. You know, you're going to pick a translate. You're going to move the slider. You're probably going to do this and set a key. You're going to undo. You know, you're going to rotate, like pivot the viewport around, press play, all these kinds of things. So let's kind of look at what's happening here. So if I kind of go to my my um, keyboard setup, a lot of the things I just picked are actually set in a particular zone. So my hand kind of just sits here. So if we go through some of them, so we had translate, like set keys on S, undo's on Z, the alt keys here, and like everything's just in this space, which is great. Like the anchor point for this is alt. So I, I want my hand to stay here. This is great for me. So what we want to do is find anything that at the right side of the keyboard that we use a lot and bring it over to the left because moving our hand from left to right and changing positions is just really getting in the way. So let's go back into Maya and we'll see which like basic functions we can pop back over there. So back into Maya. OK, so I think the first one we can modify is play. So no one wants to come down here, click the play button, click stop, and then be like, OK, cool, that looks good. And let me play again. Like this is just wasting time. There is a hotkey, of course, which is Alt and V. But the problem with that is that it's, it's moving our hand position. So if we go back to the hand, in order to, to press play, I have to either use two together, so Alt and V, or I can use one hand, but I have to do some crazy like positioning, like bring my hand down here, or I can flip it around like that. It, basically, it's just not very ergonomic, is it? So let's, this is a good candidate to, to move. So we'll basically just go to Windows, go to Preferences, go to Hotkey Editor. And this is where we're going to live for a little bit while we're picking out all these basic functions. So I know the hotkey for this already, because we just tried it. So if I just go to the hotkey, and then I'm going to press Alt, V. Can you see the hotkey? Let me just pull it to the side there. OK, cool. There it is. So we can see play Playback Toggle, and we want to change this. So where do we want to change it? So let's go back to our hand position. So open this space here, like the tool key, one, two, three. Like none of this is really being used for anything. So I think I'm just going to put it on the tool key here. This, this respects my hand placement. It's right under my fingers. So we're going to put it there. So let's go back to Maya. So here, I'm just going to press the tool key. And then it says, do you want to override something that I'll never use? So yeah, I'll save. So what you'll also notice is that it's created a duplicate. 
So you're never going to override the my defaults. It will just create its own duplicate set. So you can go back if you ever dis just decide you've ruined everything. Um, so save and close. So we go back. And now I'm pressing, um, let me just pull this down a little bit. I'm just hitting my tool key and we're playing. And this is great. I don't have to move my hand anymore. And so another one of these would be um, like clicking on the timeline here and click dragging to scrub. Like I'm moving my mouse down and scrubbing along and it's something that just isn't super intuitive. There's also another key for this. So if you press K on the keyboard and left click drag, you can actually scrub through your animation like this. So now I, need to, I never need to lose focus and look down, click this, scrub, go back up. I can press K and scrub through and just pay attention to what I'm doing. But the problem with that is it's not following our rule. So K is all the way down here when my hand needs to be here. So I have to move that all the way down there. So that would be another thing that I would change. Uh, back here to my... Uh, so you just do the same process, go to the hockey editor, find that key, and I'll probably set it to be on A or something like that. All right. So once you've done that for all of the basic functions you use, so like go to next key, go to next keyframe, all that stuff. Just set it all up so it's super nice. That's already going to be a step in the right direction. So the next thing that I like to use is display modes. So this is something in Maya by default. At least I think it came in in 2020. So if you press Alt, let me pull my keyboard down, Alt and 1, you can basically turn off everything except geometry. I think it just turns off curves which is great. You can hide that clutter and the mess on the screen. You can also just turn off your polygons. But while this is great, I have to press all and one. And I don't like the fact that I have to toggle these two things. So I actually set up my own version of this. So if I go to setting and preferences, I'm just going to go to the hotkey editor again. And this time I'm just going to load my setup to kind of speed it up a little bit. So I'm close. OK, so now I have these set to one, two, and three. So one gives me polygons only, which is great. I can just focus on what's in the scene. Two shows everything. And three hides the polygons, but shows everything else. So I can select something at the back of the rig if I want to, if it's hidden by geometry. And once it's selected, I can just show polygons and focus on what the actual geometry is doing and not what the controls are doing, which is great. I'm focusing more on the pose. And that's exactly what I want. Next, you've got all your fancy new hotkeys. Everything is in place. Uh, let's tackle, like we've got rid of some clutter on screen. So let's tackle our UI and layout. So here, like default Maya is kind of useless now. Like none of this is really helping us. And as Mario Kondo would say, it's not sparking joy. So none of these things here are being used. So I like to just remove everything and just keep the things that we absolutely need. So if we go to Window, Preferences, I'm going to go to um, sorry UI Elements. Let's just click this. I'm just going to turn off everything. Boom. But there's a couple of things I need, of course. So I want the Time Slider, and I probably want the Range Slider. The toolbox is not helping me. The command line's not the status line. None of these things like matter anymore. And you can get rid of all this stuff here as well. So I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. So now I've got this cool. Look at all this screen space. Isn't that awesome? But what I've done is I've removed all the clutter. I've got all the hotkeys I need anyway. And I can just focus on the animation. This is great as well if you've got a laptop and you can just have one screen. Um, but don't worry, everything's still on space. So if you press space bar, all of your file, everything else is here on the marquee menus. And you know you can get everything you want back. If for some reason you want to restore everything, you can go back to Windows. We're going to go into UI, the UI elements, click this. We can restore, show all again, and do that. So it's all there. Cool. Um, now let's save even more time. So 
this is going to be about saving clicks. So we've got all our basics down. We've got like a nice display happening. We're focusing on what's happening. Is there anything we can do to reduce the amount of times we have to click and repetitive actions that just take ages to do? So let's have a look at a couple of examples of this stuff. So it's going to go back to Maya. I'm just going to get rid of um, my UI again because I hate all this stuff. Uh, I don't, I was just going to go with range time slider. Great. All right. So something I do quite often is I zero keys out, and I like to just reset what the pose looks like for a particular joint. So just to check that my rotations and things are good. So I would, if you wanted to reset something, I would click. Traditionally, you would click something. You would have to go here and go, OK, right. I'm going to click this and this. Like shift select, press 0, and then 0 out. And then, OK, now I've got my 0 key. There's a lot of steps in there that we can remove that are unnecessary. So rather than going through that, you could create a script which does the same thing. So in here, I have a marking menu aptly called AnimX. So we're going to go into here. So here's my zero key script. So this basically, if I left click, I get a little menu and it's going to zero some keys out. And all it is is just like a ML script, just checking for Y, Z, et cetera, and setting it to zero. So now that I have that, rather than going to the right and clicking on everything, I can just click this. I can press space. And if I click up and drag, zero key. Super easy. I just do that. And it saved me a bunch of clicks. So that's some clicks I don't have to do ever again. Another one that I really like to do is planting. So say you're doing a run cycle and you want to plant the feet. Like how many times have you planted a foot in your animation career? Like probably quite a lot. So what I would usually do to plant a foot is I would take the frame and then I'd be like, okay, I want to plant this just on the ground. So I want to zero out my translate Y. I want to zero out my rotate X. And I want to zero out my rotate Z. Now, I don't know if anybody was counting, but that was a lot of clicks and things I needed to do, which is a perfect candidate for creating some kind of script to, to deal with that. So if I just undo all of those things, rather than going through that, now I have, again, again the same thing. I've got a little plant script which is basically just setting those variables. So I'll click my um, foot control space, and I'm just going to, there it is, plant. And I just plant it to the floor. So I think I missed the Z rotation script. But this versus going through all those clicks, like you're saving you know, five seconds at a time, maybe even more. And if you compound that over your day, you compound that over your week, compound that over your year, that combined with everything else you've been doing to speed up your workflow, you're going to save a lot of time, um, which is great. Um, so I guess at this point, if you're running into like problems and you're not super comfortable with mail script and things like that, now is a time where you can start looking for third-party scripts. So things like Aninbot would be a good thing to look at because Aninbot is kind of like a, it's like a, a, one of those fancy toolboxes you, you get, right? And it's got all the tools you'll ever need, but you only really use like five of them because you don't know what those weird tools on the right-hand side of the box like do. But this way, you're thinking about what problems you want to solve and how you can solve them. And investing a little bit of time in trying to do this is, is just a really good thing. Uh, so, yeah. Great, I'm just about done as well, which is <laughs> perfect. Uh, let's just go to slides. So yeah, thanks for watching. What I've shown is obviously a very small taste of what you can do to improve your workflow, but like, what's important is adopting the reflex of finding the pain points and insufficiencies and solving them and sparking joy in your workflow. Thanks for watching, and you can catch me on Twitter at CGMation, and also I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash CGMation every Wednesday. Uh, enjoy the rest of the stream.